ادعو الى سبيل ربك بالحكمه والموعظه الحسنه وجادلهم بالتي هي احسن ان ربك هو اعلم بمن ضل عن سبيله الحمد لله الذي علم بالقلم علم الانسان ما لم يعلم واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له تفضل علينا بنعمه وتكرم واشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا محمد عبد الله ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على اكمل معلم وخير رب سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين وعلى من تبعهم باحسان الى يوم الدين اما بعد فاوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله عز وجل فاتقوا الله حيثما كنتم ايها المؤمنون واعلموا ان العلم اساس نهضه الامم وتقدمها ورفعه الشعوب وازدهارها فما من أمة نالت حظا من الرفعة والعلو وبلغت منزلة من النهضة والسمو إلا كان العلم أساسها ومعرفة سبيلها كما قال عز وجل قل هل يستوي الذين يعلمون والذين لا يعلمون ولذلك اهتم الإسلام بالعلم اهتماما عظيما فوجه الناس الى القراءه لانها سبيل العلم كما قال عز وجل في اول التنزيل اقرا باسم ربك الذي خلق خلق الانسان من علق اقرا وربك الاكرم الذي علم بالقلم علم الانسان ما لم يعلم اقسم الله عز وجل بادوات العلم ووسائل التحصيل بإشارة إلى أهمية كتابة العلم التوثيقي فقال عز وجل نون والقلم وما يسترون كما رفع الإسلام من شأن العالم والمتعلم فقال تعالى يرفع الله الذين آمنوا منكم والذين أوتوا العلم درجات Indeed all praises are due to Allah We praise Him endlessly throughout the day and throughout the night. We seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evil within our souls and our evil deeds. We bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship in truth except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone who has no partners. And we bear witness that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Allah's final servant and messenger sent to all of mankind. Alhamdulillah, all praises are constantly and continuously to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who taught human beings with the pen, who taught human beings everything that they didn't know, from all the types of knowledge and all the types of experiences that they have witnessed and observed throughout their lives. Servants of Allah, knowledge is the foundation for the development and progress of all nations on the earth. <coughs> Acquiring knowledge and seeking to learn more is the cause of growth of individuals who flourish in their societies and communities and reach high levels of advancement within the areas which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed them. And there is no nation on the face of this earth that ever reached the highest level of development, progress and advancement except that knowledge was the basis and foundation for that growth and success. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us in the Qur'an, Say, O Muhammad, To those who know, to those who have knowledge, 
equal to those who don't know and don't have knowledge? And for this reason, we find that Islam has always paid utmost concern and attention and care to seeking and acquiring knowledge. We find that the first command that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was to seek knowledge. It wasn't to do something from actions or clean up your society with all the social ills and things going on in Mecca at that time. The first command Allah gave to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu was Iqra, read. Read in the name of your Lord who created, created man from a clock. Read in your Lord is most generous who taught man by the pen, taught man that which he did not know. And then when we look and ponder and contemplate over the many other verses in the Quran and many hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa we find that Allah, He swears by knowledge and by the tools used to acquire knowledge. One example of that is in Surah Al-Noon. Noon, wal qalami wa ma yasturun. Noon, and Allah swears by the pen and that which it writes. And similarly, showing us the status of those seeking knowledge, those acquiring knowledge, those treading on a path, seeking knowledge to better themselves and better their communities, we find that Allah raises the ranks and statuses of those who acquire knowledge, as He told us in the Quran. Knowledge. Knowledge. And And the knowledge that Islam encourages us to learn and acquire first and foremost before any other type of ilm or knowledge is knowledge of Quran and knowledge of the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is the knowledge which you should build your foundation of every other knowledge upon that you try to acquire and try to learn throughout your life. So that is the first and foremost knowledge that the Muslim should familiarize himself with constantly. Knowledge of the Quran and Sunnah. Because that is the basis. And then seek other types of knowledge as well that is beneficial with building the individual, building his community, building his family, and eventually building and developing their societies and nations. Using that knowledge to number one, build societies and communities that learn why they were created, what is their purpose here on earth, so that they can all be servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And seeking knowledge is the means to have a happy life in this world and the next. You should always try to learn something new from the cradle until you enter your grave. If a day is going by and you're not learning something new, you're stagnated. Maybe you need to change your surroundings, change your peers, change your environment. Every day you should be progressing getting better, developing yourself, learning something new. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that seeking knowledge is a means not only of ease in this world but also in the hereafter. As he said, مَنْ سَلَكَ تَرِيقًا لِيَمْتَلِسُ فِيهِ عِلْمًا سَهَّلَ اللَّهُ لَهُ تَرِيقًا إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ That whoever treads a path seeking knowledge then Allah will make the path of paradise easy for him. So it's upon the Muslim to always renew his intention. That whenever they're seeking knowledge, whether it's first and foremost knowledge of the deen, that they need to purify their intention. And then when they go to school, school's about to start next week, 
or they go to college or the university to also purify their intention. That they're learning this knowledge not only to get a degree from amongst the worldly affairs, but to also benefit himself to be a better Muslim and to use that knowledge to benefit Islam and the Muslims and Muslim society and community. No matter what it is, chemistry, physics, engineering, biology, mathematics, English, all of that, you can be rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for studying if you have a pure intention. That you're learning it to better yourself, better the Muslim's condition, better Muslim society. So if this is the case, and if school is coming up next week, the Muslim student, the Muslim youth, they need to be reminded that they need to study hard. Don't be a slouch. Don't be a cheater, because you're only cheating yourself. You need to have the best grades, and you need to have the best men. Make sure to be at the head of your class. Don't be embarrassed. Some kids, they don't want to be in the honor roll because they feel that they'll be embarrassed or humiliated or made fun of or called a nerd or a geek or something like that. These are the people who want you to run around in the street selling drugs and going to jail and riding dirt bikes up and down the road. Don't listen to what they say. Make sure that if you're Muslim, you're at the head of your class. You're on the honor roll. You're the exemplary student. You're the student of the month. You're the student of the year. You're the head of the MSA. You're the head of this club. And understand, my young brothers and sisters in Islam, students, that by trying hard in school, Allah is going to bless you. Not only will you be pleasing your parents, and making them happy when you come home with good grades and good behavior. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will love you even more. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, the pleasure of Allah is in you pleasing your parents. And the anger of Allah is in you angering your parents. So to all my youth, know and understand that when you come home with good grades, you come home with a good report card, you come home or the teacher sends a message to your parents and says that their child had exemplary and good behavior, that this is more than a lot of the things in the world for the parents. This means so much to them. So strive this year to be from amongst those students who are exemplary in their studying, an exemplary in their behavior. And know that when you put forth effort into trying to get good grades and studying hard, that we need to do it to the best of our ability. We need to try to perfect it. Even if we don't reach perfection, in our exam we get a 99 or a 98 or 97, at least give it your 100% effort and leave the results up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is not only for the students in school, but for everything that we do. How many of us, as elders or parents, we just do mashihat and everything that we do? Just to get by, we do the bare minimum. We don't try to perfect and make everything that we do precise and 100%. We can't be like that in school. We can't raise our children or our youth upon that. We have to do the best. Be all that you can be, as they say, to get people to come into the armed forces and things like that. Be all you can be as a Muslim. Perfect what you do. Master. Don't leave any hole, loopholes, or any little notches for anything to slip into it. Cut the Make the corners tight. Because the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ إِذَا عَمِلَ أَحَدُكُمْ عَمَلًا أَنْ يُتْقِنُهُ He said, indeed Allah loves that if any of you does anything, 
then you should make it perfect. You should make it precise. You should do that thing to perfection. As the Prophet said that if one of you slaughters, then make sure that your knife is very sharp and slaughter in the best way and slaughter an animal. If you're a businessman, make sure that everything that you sell is haram, is permissible, and it is in the best condition. There's no deficiencies or nothing rotten in the food that you're selling or things like that. If you're driving Uber, make sure that you're the best taxi driver that you are. Smile, greet your customer, don't speed, don't do things that would disturb your customer. If you're selling ice cream, make sure that when you deal with your customers and you give the customer the ice cream, you should hand it to them and smile in their face. This means a lot. This is part of it's on and amal. So my young brothers and sisters, when you go to school next week, make sure to pay attention to your teachers. Your teachers are there, sacrificing their time. They maybe had many years of studying and experience. They're there to, to help you, to teach you, to guide you. They're not there to fight you. Many kids now in school, they want to fight their teacher. They want to spit at their teachers or throw spitballs at their teachers or papers and things like this. This should never be something that a Muslim should say. Or they want to talk back to their teachers. Your teachers are just like your parents or your father or mother in your house. The same type of respect you have for your mother and father in the house, this is the respect and honor that you should have for your teachers. So make sure, brothers and sisters, when you go to school, you pay attention to your teachers and don't waste your time. And when you're reading books, whether it's at home or in school, try not to rush. I know many of us now, we're constantly on our smartphones and iPads and tablets and we're so caught up in the social media and Instagram and Facebook. Our attention spans used to be 45 minutes, now they're three minutes. The kids need something new. That's why they have the YouTube shorts, right? YouTube shorts. Three minutes, two minutes, boom. Keeping their attention on something new. Getting them all confused about everything. When you read a book, go to a nice quiet place. Read a couple pages, sit down, reflect what you read. Write stories on the side of the Write questions and answers on the side of the page. Thoughts, ideas you had when you read that. This will help you absorb the knowledge that you are spending time to acquire. And also, when you're studying for a test, solving math problems, physics, chemistry, take notes. No way you can solve a math problem without taking notes, unless you're a genius. Complicated algebra and pre-algebra and calculus and things like this. Take notes. This is basic things we learn in school. But when our teachers tell us in school, nobody listens. So I have to remind myself and my children here in the masjid that it's important. So brothers and sisters, knowledge and acquiring it is not something that's going to come overnight. You're not going to Go into school next week, and the teacher's going to say, line up for your injection of fourth grade, and then you're going to know everything you're supposed to know in fourth grade. I wish it was that easy, but it's not. It takes patience. Sabah. al Musaba, al Mutaba. Patience. Perseverance. Commitment. And dedication. Think about it. You're training another muscle. You're training your brain. How many of you guys work out at the gym? When you start going to the gym, you're not going to see results until probably four or five months. You're not going to go and do 100 curls and then, oh, I've got big biceps, and then that's it. You don't work out anymore, no. You're going to keep at it. Oh, wow, look, I gained a millimeter. I gained two millimeters. Oh, now my biceps are inch bigger. Oh, my chest is bigger. Oh, now I can squat more. It takes time. It takes perseverance. It takes effort. So just like 
when you exercise your body or go to the gym, okay, and you don't see the results after a couple months, six months, a year, depending on how committed or dedicated you are, similarly is the process of training your brain, training your mind, training your intellect, training your ability to memorize Quran. You're not going to come first day of Tahdeez in your life and memorize three pages. You probably won't even memorize three words, one word. But if you keep at it, persistence, commitment, dedication, the first week you maybe memorize three words, then a sentence. Then two weeks you memorize two sentences. Then a month you memorize three I. Then six months you're able to memorize a half a page. Then a year you're able to memorize a page at a time. This is how it is because your brain is getting stronger, you're training it. And also another thing that we need to learn is that training the body to sit still. Many of our youth now, some of them unfortunately, they, the parents think that their kids have ADHD or that they're hyperactive and things like that. All kids are hyper. All kids don't like to sit still. And it's very difficult to acquire knowledge to learn unless your body and mind are calm, tranquil, and at ease. So we need to teach our kids to sit still, take some quiet time out of the day, every day. Even if it starts five minutes, put the phone down, Let's read, read a book. Just for five minutes. They get five minutes down, increase it to 10 minutes, 20 minutes, half hour, until they get to an hour. Until they get to get, get, they get back to loving to read by themselves without their parents having to remind them of their teacher. So training the memory, as we said, takes time, effort, and constant repetition. Same thing with the ability to just sit and read. Just sit still and don't do nothing. Takes perseverance and commitment. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant our youth patience this school year and make them the best of students. And may Allah grant us as parents and educators in helping them progress and develop to be better. الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله. Brothers and sisters in Islam, today we are talking about knowledge and acquiring knowledge. Acquiring knowledge and having knowledge is a heavy responsibility upon all, but especially for the Muslims. And it is upon students to always make sure that their intentions are pure. Every time they wake up in the morning, make your intention pure. I'm going to school today so that I can learn the basics I need to function in life and at the same time help myself to be a better Muslim and maybe in the future help the Ummah, help Muslim communities and Muslim nations. And this is important for the students that whatever knowledge that they're seeking, they should always renew their intention and make sure that they're doing it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we recall the great Islamic nations of the past and the history of non-Islamic nations as well, we will always find that there was always a great Muslim scholar who had some major role in development those nations or those communities, or development of new innovations, worldly innovations, not religious innovations, or inventions, or tools, or devices, or medicine, that not only did their Muslim nations benefit from, but also non-Muslim nations benefited from as well, and used year after year, century after century, for more progress and more development. So let our youth revive that sunnah within our community.
We want to see Muslim scientists, Muslim engineers, Muslim imams, Muslim scholars, Muslim Quran specialists, Muslim Arabic specialists, Muslim businessmen, Muslim electricians. We want to see that and have our community. We want to be the best of those occupations and our community. So let our youth study hard this year so that they can be from amongst the forefront and the leaders of the future. Beloved servants of Allah, as you know we are all starting a new school year. Three months of summer vacation passes by like the blink of an eye. Now is the time to prepare our youth to get ready to learn and to take their learning seriously. Brothers and sisters, from the beauty of Islam is that it teaches us to not only focus on acquiring knowledge, but also focuses on the importance of joining the acquiring of knowledge with having fine and exemplary manners, having good behavior in school, having respect for your elders at school and at home, having respect for your teachers and peers, within the classroom. This is all from Islam. So this is where the roles of the parents, the teachers, and educators are primary for the building and development of these future leaders from amongst our youth we see here in our masjid today. It is very important for our parents, us as parents, teachers and educators, to instill within our youth the fundamental teaching that acquiring knowledge without proper Islamic manners is useless. Throw it in the garbage. You can have straight A's, but have disrespect for your parents, disrespect for the teachers, disrespect for your peers in school, it means nothing. It says nothing about, actually it says a lot about who you are. That that knowledge that you acquired and learned and spent so much time Sacrificing and committing and dedicating yourself didn't benefit you one percent at all. Also our educators, we should try to be optimistic and encouraging with our students and our youth and try to avoid being pessimistic and discouraged. The teachers should instill within their students good manners constant love of acquiring knowledge and learning new things and being energetic. When you see your students in class or your kids being energetic, try to grab that energy and focus it into something positive. Don't beat them. Don't punish them. Use that energy and turn it into something positive where they can benefit. Teachers should encourage their students constantly to ask. Unfortunately, in many of our cultural upbringings or understandings of Islam, it's aib. It's rude for the student to ask the teacher a question. And that's why you see these kids, they grow up muqallideen. They have no aql of their own. They're just following blind, following what the sheikh said. He can't think for himself. But that's not the way of the prophet, nor the way of the companions of the prophet. When Abdullah ibn Mas'ud was asked, Ya Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, Kayfa al-Nukta al-Ilm, how did you acquire so much knowledge? He replied, Bi lisan and sa'ul wa qalbin aqul. He said, with a tongue that always asks questions and a heart that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made to understand. So as teachers, as parents, as educators, encourage your children to ask questions. Encourage your children to have a discussion about maybe something they heard in school, something they saw on the street, something they saw in a video. And let them ask questions about everything. And lastly but not leastly, brothers and sisters, let us be reminded that we are all shepherds. كُلُّكُمْ رَاعِنْ وَكُلُّكُمْ All of you are shepherds, and are responsible for your flock. And will be asked about your flock. Did you let this sheep stray? 
get eaten by the wolf? Did you let this sheep go around with the sick sheep? Did you let this sheep stay in the barn and not give him attention and die? How did you take care of your flock? So the responsibility of parents and teachers over their students is gigantic, enormous. And it is not only restricted to buying books, buying pencils and notebooks and new school clothing, new Nikes and big bags and things like that. Unfortunately, many of the parents, they think this is what school is about, just that. School is about and requires from parents and teachers that they constantly work together as a team. If your kids are going to school, spending eight hours outside the house every day, they're spending more time with their kids than you are. When they come home, they eat dinner, they do their homework for a couple hours, and then you go to sleep, they go to sleep at 9, 10 o'clock. You spend how many hours? An hour in the morning with them, two hours, three hours in the evening, four hours. The teachers are spending more time with your kids than your parents. So it's important. The parents should be regularly calling the, the teachers, the school. Hey, what's going on with my kid? How is he doing? How is his behavior? How is his grades? What does he need help with? Is there any tutoring? Things like that. Because that's your real investment. Your kids, your youth. So it requires from the parents and teachers that they're constantly in contact. And that both of them are working together to guide the, the kids. The teacher's trying to teach the kids that it's okay to be gay. It's okay to be a homo. It's okay to be a lesbian. It's okay to be a gay man. The, teacher, the, the, the parents should be right on top of it. It's not okay. Don't teach my kid that. When you talk about that stuff, take my kid out of the class. I'm signing a waiver that I don't want him to learn. I'm complaining to the principal. Why are we so lenient about it? If our dean, if our civil rights, if the laws within our state or city protect those type of things, why don't we use it to our advantage? And many of the parents don't have this conversation with their kids. Once the kids get to fifth, sixth grade, then they start introducing the sexual education and stuff like that. So this is when you need to be more heavy upon your kid. If the teacher won't respond to you, then at least ask your kids when they come home, what did you learn today? Oh, you learn about this? Oh, we don't talk about that until we get married. Until prior to marriage, 18, 19, things like that. So, the teachers and the parents need to work hand in hand to guide the kids, to supervise them, okay? to ask about them, and also be aware of their friends. Who are they accompanying? Who are they spending their time with in school and outside of school? So, the roles of the teachers and the parents go hand in hand in raising our youth. And they should be in regular contact to keep up with the progress of our precious growing sprouts. And finally, let our youth, our children and students be reminded that when they are getting ready to go to school, to study hard, to learn, whether it's Islam first and foremost or any other branch of knowledge, to make your intentions pure. And that when you are seeking knowledge of Islam or any other branch of knowledge, mathematics, English, reading, social studies, science, chemistry, physics, to make your intention pure and sincere for Allah. That you're doing it to benefit yourself, benefit your family, benefit your community, and benefit the Muslim community. Because when you do that, and you're reminded about that, Know that the angels are spreading out their wings for you, my beloved youth, future students. The angels are spreading out their wings for you and are pleased with you studying hard in school. And not only that, not only the angels, but every living creature within the heavens, within the earth, even the ants under the ground, and the fish under the sea are asking Allah for forgiveness for you when you study hard in the masjid and when you study hard in your school. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
to make our students from amongst those who love to read and love to learn and love to acquire knowledge and learn new things. And from this knowledge, it refines their good manners and their etiquette and behavior. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give the parents and the educators tawfiq to be patient with them, to take them by the hand and to guide them and to teach them what is right from what is wrong. أقول قول هذا أستغفر الله لي ولكم وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين وأقيم الصلاة